Low Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 20. That's right, episode number 20 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we are coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia, and we are looking forward to having some great discussions in the coming weeks and months. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. Before I introduce the guest today, though, I want to point out that Amy Anderson has has declared that episode number 20 is the end of season number one. Is that correct, Amy? That's right. All right. So, shockingly, we have made it far enough to claim that a season is actually ending, which I guess means we have uh, some other episodes scheduled for season two. I'm not sure what that means or when that will happen, but I'm sure Amy and Elizabeth are on top of it. So, very soon. soon. Okay, that's what I'm told. So, this is very exciting. So, we get like a week break? Yeah. Okay. Whew. So, (laughs) we are highlighting another great organization this week and have Michael Applegate and Emily Carpenter with us from Gaston County Tourism Development. Michael is the director, and I want to get, make sure I get this one right. Emily is the business operations special, specialist, or short for boss. Thank you. you. Got that right. Okay. Yes, very you welcome. got that right. Well, well, Michael, <laughs> Michael and Emily and, and Todd agrees. So, Michael and Emily, it's great to have you on, and welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you, Stephen. You. Yeah, Thank great you. to be here. So. We're going to get started uh, r- right away, and I'm just going to start with, uh, this is really what people are interested in. If you could maybe start with you, Michael, just tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, oh, whatever, remember, whatever well, we can share I'm, on a family-friendly podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I'll only go back so far. Yeah. Um, but I, I suppose I could talk a little bit more about uh, what got me into this business. And okay. I've been in destination marketing and management since 2003. Um, I went to work for Visit Charlotte back then as their um, director of research. So prior to that, I had a career in marketing and advertising and publishing sales and all kinds of fun stuff, working with some business-to-business magazine publishers over the first half of my career. But um, when I moved up here to Charlotte from Atlanta, after going to Atlanta from graduate school, I really want to get involved in, in the whole community, in the region. You know, Charlotte's such a, a great place, the entire region is. And I was thrilled to get uh, involved in destination marketing. Spent about 10 years there with Charlotte. Moved on uh, to Cabarrus County as their uh, senior vice president of sales and destination services. Did that for about four years before... Uh, this position became available in, okay. in Gaston County, and that was, I joined this team in 2016. Okay. So that's kind of what led up to me being here, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm real happy to be here. I'm probably the only person who's worked with three different destination marketing organizations over almost 20 years and never moved. Oh, wow. <laughs> never had to move at all. Um, so it's been great. And that just shows the, the um, how wonderful the Charlotte market is, and um, particularly Gaston County. You know, I, I really felt like being in this industry and looking at what we do, you know, trying to tell stories about why people should come, spend their discretionary dollar, you know, leave home, leave where they reside, and come and enjoy downtime and relaxation and getaway weekends and that kind of thing with us. I think Gaston County has the most compelling reasons to to do that in the in the Charlotte market, and it's because of our I think outdoor recreation opportunities and that kind of thing. So this this is a position that I'm in now that I had identified to try to put myself in back in '07, and the chance mm-hmm. really came around in 2015. Well, good. So I jumped on. Yeah, it's a unique. It is definitely a, a unique county. Um, to be a landlocked county, but we have a lot of a lot of things to offer. So I appreciate you sharing that, Emily. This is what really everyone has been waiting <laughs> on, especially <laughs> the Ashbrook class of 1988. Yes, so what once can, a green wave. <laughs> <laughs> what what so you mind? What can you share? Tell us about yourself. Well, I've lived here for 38 years. Um, Greer Junior High was when Stephen and I met. 
Yeah. So we go way back. But um, <laughs> I've pretty much worked in nonprofit sector for about 13 years of my career. So I've always kind of been a community-minded person um, with my work. And then uh, when I came on board with uh, Gaston County, it just kind of fit, even though it was a, you know, it's a government entity and uh, we do things a little bit differently than a nonprofit might. It still is community-based and um, we're looking for, of course, visitors to come into our area, but we also want to give the warm and fuzzies to the people that still live here. So um, anyway, uh, married my high school sweetheart. Still happily married, I, I hope, I think. and uh, <laughs> Lucky for him, yes. Yeah, lucky for him, yeah. Um, but uh, basically have planned a lot of events in this community, have worked with a lot of, uh, you know, different um, community leaders within the city and the county, and, uh, you know, just keep doing what I'm doing with uh, travel and tourism broadening my the scope i guess okay that's so. good so this is might be the only example at least from my perspective where someone can say we're here from the government and we're from the government and we're here to help and it might actually be true uh yeah, yeah. It, it actually it, it's yeah it I, actually is that's one of the first you know? things that i <laughs> kind of put in place when we uh, we kind of got here that you know we're, we're going to be um the county department, the government department that uh, is entrepreneurial, and and we make sure that um, we're out there and providing a great uh, experience and service. Because when we're talking about travel to the destination, we have to go out and reach out and, yeah. and get it and try to stimulate sure. that action. Mm-hmm. So uh, we can't sit idly by and wait for it to show up. We need to, you know, show our value to our partners by, you know, intentionally and purposefully reaching out and getting it and helping enhance their businesses. Well, and working with the community is what brings more people in. So, you know, we have to have that partnership with all of the folks that are already here because they need our help. Oh, yeah, you can't work in a vacuum with what you you guys are doing, for sure. Yeah, we've got to get the word out for them. So people will come to visit. So you may have already entities. kind of you may have already described this already, but kind of the next question I typically like to ask is, what can you? What is the mission, or is there a specific mission, or can, have you already kind of described what you're what you're trying to accomplish here at the at tourism development? Yeah, kind of coming into it, I think what Emily touched on is so true with the collaborations and the partnerships. You know, we're a destination marketing and development organization, uh, but by definition, we don't really own or operate anything. We're really (laughs) here to tell the story, you know, to uh, engage the audience, to enhance uh, what we have here and uh, explain to everybody why they should want to visit Gaston. So what we're here to do is highlight those experiences that are here. And our mission would be to, to optimize Gaston County's brand experiences to drive visitation and partner economic growth. So, you know, we really appreciate the investment that local business owners who are serving the hospitality industry, whether they be hotels or restaurants or brew pubs or attractions or retailers or unique downtown businesses, all those types of uh, enterprises that have invested in this community really make us who we are. And if we can theme that, package that, kind of embrace that and leverage that, to tell the story of what an experience in Gaston County would be like, uh, that's really what we're doing. And that's uh, just a shout out and an appreciation of the, the commitment and the dedication of the people who run businesses here every day and who are employed and taking great care of their customers every day. All right. That's a lot to unpack. I mean, that was a, <laughs> that's a big state. Anything to add to that, Emmy, or did he just? No, if you want to just say it in one, and he said it, but, along with other stuff, but it's just to drive visitation to the destination okay. yeah. it, and, um, you know, increase. That's yeah, something my more pea brain can understand, it, so it, thank it, you. Emily. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's that first <laughs> Well, sentence. it's so, yeah. Stop you know, it after well, the mission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like but a, also we want to be the premier outdoor <laughs> recreation <laughs> destination because of our uniqueness. Right. You can't go to Charlotte and get on the water like you can here. Um, there's 
You can't climb Crowder's Mountain. In you, you can't. Brackenburg County, yeah. That's right. You might have and a couple of bumps over there, but not, right, not, a, right. not a real mountain. Yeah. It's really the, the accessibility. So I, I suppose when you combine that mission, that vision together, that's kind of the that's purpose what? that we're trying to serve. So, uh, you know, optimizing the experiences to, to drive visitation and, and partner economic growth on a, for the purpose of becoming yes. the Piedmont's premier outdoor yes. recreation destination. Because I think when you look at the state, and particularly the middle of the state, from Raleigh over here to the Charlotte market, uh, I don't think anyone else, any metro area in the state, can, can rival the outdoor experiences that we can offer. Well, I agree. Uh, and I, I think, Stephen, you, you touched on it. I, I mean, I've been in Charlotte for 10 years and worked to promote Charlotte. I worked for four years to promote uh, Cabarrus County. And was, I was amazed at all the free accessibility to outdoor experiences that Gaston County and all of our municipalities had already de- developed. Right. You can get on the water here. Mm-hmm. In fact, the park and rec system, Carolina Thread Trail, they've built launches and want you to be doing yeah, it. I actually think we're doing park and rec here in a few weeks, aren't we? That's yeah, well, And so, even the local people that live here, like my kids, you know, they're like, I want to go fishing or I want to go kayaking. And I'm like, do you know what is in your own backyard? <laughs> <laughs> right. But that's I not mean, exciting, Mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to go somewhere else, yeah. right? So to be so close to uptown. You know, 20 minutes basically from uptown to our offices in Belmont and to have so many experiences there available at the ready, so close is, you know, you look nationwide, that doesn't really exist in a lot of Yeah, I have to admit we had John Searby on from the uh, the Riverkeeper and I was even stunned to hear some of the the Riverkeeper as a a broad organization and and the whole – I had no idea, frankly, how big the Catawba River Basin was. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of thought I did, but yeah. but it, it, just the stuff they're doing here in, in the county, I'm sure y'all are familiar with, with oh, that yeah. group. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> can you so kind of unpack all that? What you just said? Are there any? Can you share any initiatives or any activities or what? What kind of things are you are specifically doing? Or I'm not sure if that's a fair question, but kind of to promote that, can you share some of that? Well, you almost beat us to it um, by inviting John in. Okay, but yeah. when with that question, the first thing that comes to my mind is kind of the relationship that we've carved out with the Catawba Riverkeeper. And I think it exemplifies a lot of what's going on. Because of all the river access that we have, whether it be Belmont, Mount Holly, uh, uh, whether it be over on the South Fork side with Cramerton and Cadenville, uh, because of that, we have more and more outfitters that want to be a part of our community right. and kind of offer this experience to visitors and to residents and put people on the water. And um, when John was looking for a home outside of, you know, downtown Charlotte, yeah, he thought, how, you know, how better to educate people about the river than to put them on it and give them experiences and help them learn to appreciate it. So we talked pretty early on in the process while he was looking at the several opportunities in Gaston County, but the one thing we expressed is that we would love to have you here and anything we can do to help get you here you know, we're all about. So as they kind of flushed out that relocation and then reached out to us and said, when we get there, you know, we've chosen McCaddenville and we want to be outfitting tours on the South Fork River <laughs> from the boathouse in McCaddenville. Like, what can we do to help with that? Yeah. Because they are actually implementing an experience that we can go and get behind and promote from Richmond, Virginia to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, across this great audience of outdoor recreation enthusiasts, and that's an experience that people would travel to participate in and build a, a weekend around. Yeah, that's that's an organization I think a lot of people in Gaston County have heard of, but they don't probably realize the the coverage or, or how expansive an organization it is. I think he shared they were have roughly five thousand members. If I'm uh, John, sorry if I quoted that number wrong. If you're <laughs> listening, but and you know, and I think the majority of them don't live in Gaston County. But they're coming here, or, or they're you know they're doing so. It's it's a unique kind of as a lifelong residence here. It's kind of like the Shield Museum. I you know we take that for granted because we live yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another thing that brings a lot of people you know into right. into our into our county. 
Yeah, there's only one larger um, planetarium in the state. I, I think the one in Chapel Hill, but yeah. other than other we don't than talk that, about. Uh, yeah, we, we don't. don't talk about anything well, Chapel Hill we, on this. We definitely on don't on this podcast. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that's what got me here. My, Maybe you don't want my, to. Mike's, a, uh, <laughs> my, Mike's one of those. That's what got yeah. me from Boston to uh, to North Carolina. <laughs> okay, well then that's a good that's a good so I, so that's a good enough reason <laughs> to talk about it. And and maybe my fact that my wife went there. I should, uh, I, should, uh, I, should I should remember that. I'm, I'm married to a to state graduate though, so I. Right, yeah. well, so, so you have a mixed we, we marriage. We can get along. We you have a mixed marriage like I do. So. Yeah. Um, just going back to the initiatives and yeah, stuff. Yeah, please do. Um, we. This is not in. It's hasn't come to fruition yet, but we were talking about how cool would it be to be on the trails? Like, there's so many trails throughout Gaston County. Right. When you're on a trail, do you really know where you are on that trail and what's nearby? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to figure that out. So we were like, how cool would it be to have some things on the trail? You pretty much are going to have your cell phone. So you can scan, um, what are those things called? Um, QR code? Bar- yeah, QR yeah. QR code, barcode? Yes, yeah. you scan one of those things. <laughs> and um, It's only because Amy has <laughs> told, me, told me about this. And um, it'll tell you kind of... What's in that area? Maybe some historical historical facts about where you are, and then how far is it to go eat or to go get a drink or to go hop on the water or to go do this or that? The oh, other. yeah, that's really good. So we're kind of that's coming. That's yeah. terrific. I, I think that's just the coolest thing. Well, and, and it and could be yeah. Things like that are happening all the time because when you look at um, the connections that we're building. By preserving the trails and uh, creating the blue ways and the green ways and all the great work that Carolina Thread Trail is doing here in the county, the ultimate goal is to continue those connections so that the outdoor recreation areas wind up <laughs> to deliver you to a point of interest that is the, the, all these 13 downtown municipalities where people can get amenities and services that they might need, you know, stop for lunch, rent a bike, rent a kayak if you didn't bring yours. So it's those connections from the natural spaces to the places of business that can support the needs of the visitor and the recreation enthusiast. Wow, that's, um, that's some good stuff. So do you have any um, specific success stories that you could share? Um, something that's accomplished, or maybe it kind of ties into then this next question, where, you know, which is what are you most proud of accomplishing at the at uh, the tourism development, I mean, those kind of maybe can maybe tie together. That's for that's for either one of you. I don't know. Or is that a question no. you skipped? No. It it yeah. actually is because um, I could not I'll think of a I'll success story because there's so there's like I was wanting to talk about maybe Earl, you know, with with and black folks camp too. Yes. And our, our friend Earl B. Hunter Jr. Yeah. Or, oh, he's a mess. He's great. Yeah. Or maybe even Heidi. With, oh, um, you, got with the, you go, because I'm not sure that. Uh, well, the, the, there are. I'm not and sure if I'll. S- one of the things that we really want to do to position the county is, you know, if if there are people out there who are outfitting and packaging uh, experiences or running championships and tournaments and trips and all those types of things, meetings, events of any sort, we want them to be choosing Gaston County as a as a host site for a championship or a tournament or a business meeting or a camping trip right. or a stand-up paddleboard event. And they're all the ones that Emily was kind of touching on. So, you know, we're reaching directly out to, to partners who can bring their events to us and convincing them that this is a great place for them. Uh, but I think one of the things, the success story that I think encapsulates some of what we've been talking about already with Blue Way is we pitched, and this is the connection with Earl B. Hunter Jr. Yeah, he introduced is... us directly to a, a Deborah Holt Noel with North Carolina Weekend in uh, okay. PBS. And uh, back in December of last year, I was pitch- pitching her on this idea of doing a story on our Blue Way Trails okay. to kind of bring into focus just how these experiences lead to different points of interest, right? So the purpose of doing the trail would be to say, well, there's multiple stops along the way and places that you can arrive to by water. Uh, and you might want to get get out there and get on, on the river for 45 minutes or an hour and, and see, see what you discover. So ultimately in May, we're able to get 
Deborah Holt Noel to put us on their editorial calendar. And in May, they came and they shot uh, for two days an experience in, in Cramerton and McCaddenville. And we basically, the reason why I love this is because we had all, all of our partners doing the talking for us. Mm-hmm. It was the same, they were filming the same weekend that I was in Wilmington for my daughter's college graduation. So we basically developed the plan and uh, the agenda in the run of show and let the partners take it from there. So I think it kind of that whole segment, which they aired in, in August of this year, and which people can find, it's a six and a half minute segment on North Carolina weekend. Uh, I think that really it's depicts really what we're trying to okay. do to tell the story of an experience in Gaston County. So if you think about it, just the, the short trip that they took, Deborah and her family came out, John Searby, his wife and daughter helped put them on the water. Uh, they didn't even have to bring any gear. Uh, so it was great to be filming them experiencing the water. Uh, they stopped at Floyd and Blackie's. They oh, stopped yeah. mm-hmm. at, at Mayworth's. They stopped at um, uh, and played some disc golf with, with Eric Smallwood and Park and Rec. So they were kind of bringing to life some of those other things that you do when you're spending an afternoon or some time out on the water. Well, what else is nearby, like Emily had said, and what else can you be doing? So I think that's a great success. Uh, Well, can I tell you, this guy named Earl, who has this little organization called Black Folks Camp 2, so he and his son went camping or went hiking or whatever just all over the, across the United States. And he said that he, he did not run into another person of color, an Afri- African-American person. And he was like, what the heck? You know, so <laughs> he came back and put this organization together to teach folks and to give them the equipment and the know-how of how to camp. Yeah. And so he came here, and we actually sponsored <laughs> him and his group to come and camp. And we made sure that they were taken care of. And so they had a nice little group and they camped and they did the whole nine and everything. But it was because of that relationship that we made with him that we got this PBS. Yeah. Yeah, that we, that got we the, had the opportunity to. to yeah, that's a good one. We would try to put the um, the links, I find the link to that and put it in the show notes when we yeah. get oh, done. Right. So that, that, that'd be a great one, great yeah. one to share. I think um, that, that's another organization that I think helps us tell our story. And just by virtue of what Earl's doing with Black Folks Camp 2, uh, if he can kind of put his seal of approval on what we're doing here in Gaston County and the welcoming, hospitable nature of what we're doing for the travel industry, then that just helps us diversify and broaden the audience that we're serving. So the idea is to continue to get people comfortable in the outdoors. If you look at it, the outdoor recreation industry it's about a $900 billion a year industry. And that's some research that I did a few years ago when I was interviewing for this job. I just thought, you know, we can, um, we can focus on the outdoor recreation industry. There's already a lot of dollars being spent in it. We have multiple uh, assets in the outdoor recreation industry to promote. If we can just pick off a little bit of that spending here in Gaston County, We'll have a successful tourism industry. So, you know, of that $900 billion, 20% of that is to buy gear, like kayaks, Mm -hmm. uh, fishing gear, tents, uh, bikes, all those kinds of things. 80% of that spending, people who own all that kind of stuff, could go on trips to use it. And one of the things that I think is great about Gaston County is that we provide a great entry way into these experiences. You know, we have a lot to offer. There's a wide spectrum, but I don't want to intimidate people. I, you know, I, I want to show them there's zero barrier to entry. If you don't own the equipment, we'll find an outfitter who'll rent it to you. Sure. If you, if you don't uh, want to, uh, you know, spend a lot of money to, to get tickets to places, we'll show you some of those places that are free. Uh, so we feel like we have a great destination to introduce people to outdoor recreation, but then also to provide some of those more adventurous experiences for the, uh, uh, you know, the well-experienced uh, crowd too. So. Yeah, I'm an extremely inexperienced um, <laughs> See, camper, me too. But, but I have actually we growing up with our my my kids, we camped at 
Crowder's Mountain and King's Mountain, mm -hmm. you know, in tents. So that was, uh, mm -hmm. so, and we didn't die. So yeah, you're still here. <laughs> you yeah. so that's good. But that's even a, like, you know, paddleboarding and kayaking, yeah. to me, that is so um, nerve wracking. I mean, it's just a little above my grade of comfortableness. Yeah, we don't come out of the womb knowing how to do that. No, no, <laughs> but the levels are there. I mean, yeah. they, you know, it's so you can, you can start up as a beginner or that you can, they can take you on some, you know, a little more risky. That's a, I mean, that's a great, things. that's a great success story. So is that the kind of thing, is that a typical example? Because you know, the next question was kind of, what are you most proud of accomplishing? Is that kind of encompass that? Or is there something else specific that you would like to, like to share? I'm going to jump in to, to explain a little bit more about who Heidi is too, because yeah, she, go um, ahead. Uh, she kind of has helped us in, in a couple of circumstances. Uh, Heidi um, Schmidt Cole, she's actually an engineer with Duke Energy, and um, engineers are good. She's yeah. passionate about the water, and she's an experienced paddleboarder. And when I met her, she had already purchased, uh, I think, eighteen stand-up paddleboards and equipment. And all she wanted to do is give people experiences on the water, share her passion with other people, help certify people to be able to paddle. People like me and to enjoy it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Part of so she was one of the original outfitters that we worked with, and the name of her business is is Anchored Soul, and uh, so she was out there putting people on the water, and then as we got to know each other a little more, found out that she was actually uh, participating in a circuit for the Southeast Paddleboard Series. So she was an amateur, but you know in that series all over the Southeast, there's professionals who compete along with amateurs who compete, and she said. I want to one day host an event in that series here in Belmont. And a year later, you know, she, she was doing it. She oh, reached wow. out and yeah. she said, help me, help me find a location. Mm -hmm. And this was, I, I think it was uh, 2019. It was mm -hmm. before COVID. And then yeah. COVID hurt our second year. Yeah, we just but we had our second year, year. Just, just recently. But she had the most successful first year event on that circuit. Uh, back in 2019 when she mm -hmm. did it, and uh, we were able to do it at the Wildlife Club. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she had over 100, 120 registered participants from two All dozen over. states. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was just great. So from a couple of perspectives, you, you know, you never know those connections that partners and local enthusiasts can help make for you. So, you know, she was our ambassador. Right. You know, very few people are going to run into the four of us full timers here with uh, <laughs> Gaston County. We're we, we're targeting the travel and tourism. We, we have that here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, if, but if we can spread the message by doing things like this yeah. podcast and educating the general public and our local populace about what it is we do, maybe they'll help us make these types of connections. Well, see, I've already been educated. I didn't even know that was such a there was such a thing as you know professional paddleboard. Now I should have assumed that because there's so mm -hmm. many. So many, so well, many things like that are, are so much beyond what I can comprehend. Well, and they, you've seen them with their dogs on the paddleboard. That she'll teach you how to do that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, just little things like that. My little dog would just drown himself. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine's scared of the water, so. Um, so now that's just becoming, uh, if, if there's a, an access point where we can put an outfitter, so people can show up to that access point and then have the choice to, rent from uh, Aquatic Adventures or rent from Papa Steve, you know, that's just, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just great. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's, um, I got a feeling we could be on here for five or six hours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, I, and I'm, and I'm, I'm all serious. I mean, I'm and it's all it interesting, yes, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, especially with, with Emily here. <laughs> um, so I love, I like, I like this question and you, we've probably already shared about, I don't know, 50 reasons, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So can maybe in your own words, both of you, I and mean, I'll start with you, Emily. Why is Gaston County better? Because um, tourism development is here. Um, I think because we're cutting edge. Yeah. Um, Mike thinks outside of the box, and he's taught me to do that because – we are a government entity, which normally we have to stay inside our lane, <laughs> but we don't. Yeah. And so um, you guys watched the Panthers um, game, not this past one, but the other one with the big 
avatar panther oh, yeah. coming out. Okay, yeah. we're already on it, <laughs> talking about stuff to implement something like that within our marketing. Um, uh, so it might be a little higher quality than the, what we're doing here with this podcast. It, it, maybe, <laughs> maybe a little bit more than the Amazon mic. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but just, you know, choosing different ways to promote Gaston County right. through social media, through, um, you know, cutting edge technology, I think has really grown us in the past year with COVID. Because oh, we've sure. all been behind our, you know, we've been ha- behind closed doors. We've had to rely on the computer. We've had to rely on the internet. Thank goodness we were able to go outside. So that, that helped us to be able to, to still enjoy what we have here in the county. But to promote what we have in the county sure. it is um, something that I think is uh, really great. And while we're here and... A, a big positive. Well, thank you. Michael, anything to add to that? Or? Yeah, I do. I think um, you can kind of look at it from a couple of perspectives, or kind of the, um, the things that are a little bit more intangible, like just the, the increased awareness of our assets for recreation and reasons why people would want to come and visit Gaston County if they reside 50, 100 miles, 300 miles away. Uh, so I think that helps the community. I think the community is better for us being here doing that, kind of raising the profile of our county and of all the great experiences that can be had here. And as we do that, and a lot of what we've talked about is kind of recruiting where we care of can events and businesses and supporting local businesses that serve hospitality. As we do that, then we just, you know, en- enhance our ability to not only draw more visitors, but we also improve uh, the experience for locals who live here and who reside here. So, uh, so I think ultimately we get to a place where we keep evolving and growing as a destination as we try to make it more attractive for visitors. We by you know default are, are making it better for uh, for residents as well. So I think it's that that increased awareness kind of builds on itself and grows the appreciation. And I think can get people excited about what we can become in the future. So, yeah, that was a nice segue to what what do you think the organization looks like five to ten years down the road? Well, I think um, just in the past year, even with COVID, um, our lodging industry has increased substantially. Right, yeah, I, you know? I've noticed that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, with that, I, I think that's going to continue and then – I think more venues are going to open to where we can hold conferences. We can hold big things that are going to come from far away that, that want to come here and, you know, have a, have a conference in Gaston County to where, you know, the uh, free time is going to be uh, paddle yeah. team building session or, oh, sure. you know, whatever it may be. So um, I, I just think that's good. Just going to get bigger and bigger. And these aren't, and these aren't, horror movie hotel down on the frontage road. No, either. right, <laughs> right. <laughs> These are quality, quality uh, facilities. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, you know, just by virtue of having a I-85 running through our destination and really connecting so many big metro markets throughout the East Coast and the Southeast, uh, we're really convenient to get to. There's a huge population in the United States that's familiar with where we are. And, um, you know, as we have more success, it just kind of breeds success. And as Emily mentioned, during during COVID, even during the downtime in the economy, we added uh, about 11% capacity. We opened up three mm-hmm. new hotels during the last mm-hmm. uh, year and a half that we were going through COVID. So although we grew our inventory by 11%, We've also been able to keep up with the demand in that since April, we have been setting records uh, beyond the records that we set in 2019 before COVID. We had the best ever year in the county in terms of uh, occupancy tax revenues. Uh, we basically recovered from COVID, and now we're, since April, oh, we're on a streak of where we continue to see uh, new monthly and weekly records. and. Uh, just hotel occupancies and hotel demand and 
spending on hotel rooms in the destination. So there's some pent up demand in the last 18 months. <laughs> and I, I think we should probably say too that that's how we are funded. That's how right. Gaston County is. I mean, that's how uh, travel and tourism is funded is through the occupancy tax. Um, at the ho- if you stay in a hotel, you pay an occupancy tax. Sure. And that that is uh, the money that is collected there goes to the three. Um, municipalities that have a hotel there. So it's McCaddenville, Belmont, Gastonia. Mount, Mount Holly. Mount Holly, Mount sorry. Holly, yes. Yeah, 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 sorry. And um, I'll get one of McCaddenville sooner yeah. or later. So <laughs> half goes, or a percentage goes to those municipalities, and then a percentage comes to us, and that is a, a mandate. You know, uh, um, we know what you mean. Yeah. Legislated yeah. by Le- the legislation. Legislation. Right. Yes, yeah. legislation. Yeah. Yes. Another one of those words I don't well, know. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> one of those big words. But, that's um, all, uh, yeah. The great thing about that is, you know, when you when you think about having to book a hotel room or selling a hotel room, sometimes it's a convenience thing, but um, most of what we're trying to do is make it a discretionary choice for people to choose to uh, book that hotel room in Gaston County. And then in order to do that, we have to answer the question, why? You know, why would I need that hotel room here? So as we continue to grow those hotel occupancy revenues in the future, we also have to keep growing the experiences and the assets and the facilities and the venues and the entertainment that we have here in Gaston County. So people will continue to choose to book rooms, uh, Mm -hmm. to spend time, to spend multiple days to, um, to enjoy all the activities that we have in and around. And it's been fascinating just in the last five or six years to see how much development there's been Mm -hmm. um, not only on the residential side and and the business side, but also on the um, tourism side with facilities and venues and experiences that want to serve the traveling public and, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, embrace the outdoor experiences that we have here. So that sounded like that coincided with your hiring. Is that right? That time frame, five to six years ago, when all this ex- all this exploded, <laughs> ding 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 ding. Thank you. <laughs> that, that that's just um, I can do simple math. That's just <laughs> what I'm aware of. It has nothing to do with um, uh, me being here. <laughs> so um, it's just it's been fun to be up close and be able to see it and track it and understand what's going on. But um, you know, if I may have timed something up, luckily and yeah. <laughs> by sheer coincidence. Caught, yeah, caught the wave on the on the rise, and that's good. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Huh? <laughs> I'll take so, it every time. So before we kind of move on to these um, the, the really important questions that everybody mm-hmm. wants to know about, is there anything else I haven't asked? I mean, we'll come back to, to tourism development before we're finished, of course, but is there anything else you'd like to share, anything I haven't asked that you would think would be worth sharing at this time before we I think we've said a lot. Get serious. <laughs> yeah, we're on track to be you know the longest episode ever. No, I'm kidding. Actually, we're not. We're not yet. That would be. That would was. That was Omer Shed uh, last week. So, all right. So, well, you're going to have your um, hands full trying to edit this to something sensible. <laughs> oh no, we don't. We we do. We do no editing at all. Unless I. Unless I. If I mess great, up. If great. I mess. If I mess up, then I will edit it out. But if the guests mess up, we don't. We don't edit that out. So this is what we call. What I'm going to call it today is. Do you really live in Gaston County? Round of questions. Okay. All right. Are you ready, Emily? I'm ready. We'll start with you. I'm ready. All right. What is your favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? Mine is mint chocolate chip, but Todd's, my husband, is grape. Is it grape? It is grape. He just had one yesterday. Did he really? He did. I he think was so excited. I think that is the first mint chocolate chip in 20 episodes that we've had. Anybody really? say yes? So you. I am unique. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen just rolled his eyes luckily, in case anybody wanted to know. <laughs> luckily, this isn't on video, Todd. <laughs> My, Michael, what about you? Your favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? That would be peanut butter ripple. Mm. Somebody yeah, else anytime said that you one, can get peanut butter and chocolate together, yeah. that's it. Like, I, all right, that's all I need. How about sun drop or cheer wine? Cheer wine. Had a cheer wine yesterday, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ch- a cheer wine. Even diet chair wine. Mm-hmm, me too. I, diet I need, chair I need wine. the cola. Yeah. That's, that's more like uh, my, yeah. my, my, my everyday go-to. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite local restaurant? And I, is this like a loaded question for the two of y'all, or is it, can you can you answer this question? I really without? cannot answer this question because 
I was like, okay, well, do, do we want to think breakfast? Do we want barbecue? <laughs> do we want this? Do we want that? Yes. So I went with breakfast. Okay. I thought breakfast, and um, this is crazy, but um, anybody know Byram's? Yes. On I New sure Hope do. Road? Yes. They got the best sausage, egg, and cheese sandwich. Yes. Yeah, nice. And so, their grits, you don't even have to put anything in them. They're right there at, uh, well, it's, it's, it's not, just right like a, a little. Right, right across from Twin Tops, right? Yes. Right across the side yes. road from, from Twin Tops. Side road from Twin Tops, yes. So when you can find it open, because their, their hours are odd, go check out their grits and sausage, chicken, cheese sandwich. Maybe we can request some ad money from them after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. And their cheeseburgers are pretty good, too. Connection. Michael, oh. what about you? I'm going to say two when it kind of both of them play into a part of a, a larger theme. So that's why I feel comfortable kind of calling them out. Hey, this is, you know. But um, Webb's Custom Kitchen. Oh, yeah. Sure. In downtown mm-hmm. Gastonia. Actually, both of them. It's a very popular Webb answer. And uh, also Barristers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you think about what they're doing, you know, Emily had touched on it before in her answer to like um, all the experiences for events. But it kind of takes three things going on to make a great event venue. And that's, you need the space to host the meeting. You need the nearby accommodations, you know, for the, for the overnight guests of the meeting. And then you need the nightlife and the entertainment and those great local experiences so that you're an attendance draw. You know, we, we have to answer the question all the time with meeting planners, you know, why? Why would attendees, why will that be well, the a revenue top, generator that's why. for us? Yeah. And know? I think just by nature of what these two uh, restaurateurs and business owners mm-hmm. have done in the downtown to take uh you know these historic properties kind of reinvent them absolutely and open them up so that the public can come and enjoy them i just saw something yesterday jim getting ready to do something else with some he is i saw that too i saw that too so i think that's uh that's important to kind of encourage that to keep that going because anytime someone goes anywhere they want to learn more about what's what's the history of this place like what's Mm -hmm. unique about it and what can i see and what kind of Stories can I take home with me? And I feel that's what those two restaurants in particular. Are yeah, I've taken a few out, you know, out of town friends or, or uh, acquaintances to Webb, and I think every time it comes around to the story comes around to, yeah, this is where I saw Rocky in, in 1970, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. That was interesting. All right, this may be another unfair question for, for to review, but favorite outdoor activity in Gaston County? Mine is just um, getting on uh, Brian Stacy's pontoon boat and um, Fair enough. floating in the water <laughs> on Lake Wiley. That's my favorite. Um, that just took me back. I bet it did. Maybe not the pontoon boat, but it was a, yeah. it was a boat of some sort. Back yes. In, yeah. In our teenage years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I enjoy Post and Park, the dog park out there. Yeah, yeah that's fun. Post and Park is really yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really nice. Really and I've watched a lot of baseball out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, Watch a lot of soccer. I've watched a lot yeah. of soccer at yeah. Poston Park yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah, and uh, I have an F three. That's one of our F three a group AOs. Are you familiar with? F3? Oh yeah, yeah. I need to get Todd uh, involved do. with F three. You do. Yeah. So this We've is a shout out. All, any, anybody F three out there listening today? Todd Carpenter. He's he. We need to get him. I've, I've already and got his. I've already got his nickname picked out for that too. Well, one, he's one having he's surgery going. tomorrow, so. Um, after um, after that, he needs to get involved. I bet he'll be really happy that you shared that. Too. Yeah. Sorry, Todd. So just, I'm not going to ask what type of surgery. You <laughs> no, can, you, it's not. You can share with that. Yeah, after. it's fine. <laughs> Michael, what about you? You know, one of the great things about the Catawba River Keeper and the uh, experiences that they're offering, is that gave me uh, the chance by going on that tour with them to paddle from Spencer Mountain down to McCaddenville. I hadn't covered that three mile stretch in a kayak uh, prior to going out with the River Keeper, and. Um, and it was a thrill. There, there's some really great places to paddle in, the, in that stretch uh, with some good rapids and some good uh, boulders to maneuver around yeah. and that kind of thing. So there's, there's some skill involved, and I was happy to have uh, some guides in front of me to say, <laughs> this is the path you want to take, and if you hit a rock, just keep paddling and yeah. you'll be okay. Um, so, so that was fun, and so that was kind of a favorite experience because I wouldn't have probably just gone out there myself without yeah. kind of a guided tour and um you know to kind of be even we have the water trails and we have the the land trails i i really appreciate uh poston park 
And part of the story of all those great acres of trails out there is just the volunteer work that Piedmont Area Single Track Alliance put into building the 13 miles of single track trail that's out there at Poston Park. So even though it's a county owned and operated venue, if you will, it was the hard work of volunteers and the county saying, yeah, sure. If this club wants to get out there and build trail, we'll, we'll let them do it. Uh, that has just given us a, a more appealing place there, Poston Park. And there's other things happening around it now with, with Lowell mm-hmm. and, and Spencer Mountain and with the Thread Trail and Lands Conservancy. So it's kind of just continuing to build into this great corridor of expanses. Yes. Of yeah, I think we have the Thread Trail scheduled in a few weeks as well, too, uh, and they're coming on. So uh, yeah. this, is a, um, awesome. this is a question that I'm going to ask and just you know, preface it and – I think Omer Shedd really gave me a hard time last week about uh, <laughs> everybody knows you're an NC State guy, Stephen. So I'm going to ask this question anyway because I'm tired. You know, as an NC State guy, I grew up in Gaston County. You get tired of hearing about UNC and Duke all the time. So mm-hmm. UNC, Duke, or NC State? Duke. I knew that. Go Duke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And Ben, my youngest son, just is a freshman at NC State, so I don't know what I'm going to do. But oh, anyway. I knew there was some brain somewhere in that family. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Michael? Well, it's Carolina. Yeah, that's what I When you yeah. say Carolina, say North Carolina. When you say Carolina, say heel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Actually, I take that back. We are going to edit out the yeah. <laughs> of this episode. All right. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm married to a, an NC State graduate, and uh, North Carolina is certainly my adopted home state. It's been been very good to me. And uh, – you know, our rivalry at home was such that my daughter chose to go to UNCW mm-hmm. in Wilmington, and my son's now at uh, in Asheville at UNC Asheville. So well, I have a they we, pick their own. Yeah, really my son yeah. is combo. my son is a senior at Western Carolina, and my daughter is a junior at, at, at Appalachian State. So, <laughs> right, there. so we're not anyway. getting caught up in all that. You know what? We have a great university and college. Uh, uh, opportunities here in North Carolina. We really do. Yeah, we really do, in all yeah. seriousness. So, Michael, I'm going to start with you on this question. What is something very few people know about you? Oh, boy. Um, Again, remember, you know, this is a family-friendly <laughs> podcast. <laughs> no, we'll give a, a little bit of the backstory. Um, I grew up in Boston, suburban Boston. My dad was a, a Boston police officer. I am one of 11 children. Wow. Uh, from Boston. And We're, I had to move to North Carolina and a thousand miles away in order to get noticed that anyone. <laughs> <laughs> where, so where are you in the pecking order uh, of the 11? I am lucky number seven. Okay. Lucky number seven. Uh, so that's a lot. Of siblings. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was lucky enough to get fed once a week. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday was my day. I got, got uh, so look forward to Wednesdays because that's when I got to eat. You got dinner. ravioli on Wednesdays. <laughs> 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 but um, no, that, that that was an experience, uh, and I don't think a lot of people would realize that now because, you know, going to Chapel Hill and moving there in 1991, uh, I had to get rid of the speech impediment that was a Boston accent. <laughs> I just got so tired of saying Patakan Harvard Yad um, <laughs> that it just, at some point, it just gets so tiring to repeat yourself. You know, what did he just say? So. Well, you know, we, I've taken it out. See, we actually it's do that on purpose. We make you repeat <laughs> mm-hmm. people from mm-hmm. people above the Mason Dixon line. We actually we understand. We just want you to repeat it so we can mock you even further. <laughs> right. But no, pr- proud of my upbringing, where I'm from. But um, uh, obviously, chose to be here, and and uh, there's a lot of family members who are jealous that I uh, made the break and escaped when I could. Well, you know, once you come down here, there's not many that go that go back. It's, a, right. it's a wonderful place. Emily, I'm not sure I want to ask you this question. <laughs> but what is something very few people know about I'll you? Be, I'll be nice. I'll be good. Um, I have been fishing since I was four years old. And I, wow. um, I'm i pretty good at it. I don't think I knew that. Yep. Yeah. Now, I'm salt water. I don't. Oh, okay. Fresh water's okay, but um. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I've taught so, both my boys how to do, how to fish, how to um, bait their hooks, how to take the you. fish off. Uh, I still have to bait Todd's hook. <laughs> 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 no, 
that is that is the best nugget of the day right there. I am so glad. Make sure you let him know that when you see him. Actually, if he comes to F3, I've just changed his nickname to something different that, that, that he's going to be given. Oh, yeah. um, so, but uh, flounder fishing is my favorite. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I did some of that with my dad when I was when I was oh, younger. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, looking back, I know Emily, it's just been you know five or six years ago. What knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your twenty year old self? Go with your gut. I changed. Uh, you know, we change our minds so many times because you just with my kids. And I've got two kids in college right now, and you know, they're on their path and they're doing great. I remember when I was there, I changed my mind so many times and <laughs> just, just, you know, wasn't yeah. sure. And, and looking back, if I, you know, just kind of go with your gut. Usually it's right. So it's good advice. Yeah. Not that I, you know, not that I would change anything really. I don't think, but Todd's glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, um, you know, just some decisions that we make, we um, dwell. Yeah. We don't have perspective. Right. right. You don't have perspective when you're 20. That's just a big common theme with that question. And um, you know what? And I think I've learned it's impossible. I'm afraid it's impossible to have real perspective without experience in some age. I mean, Absolutely. It, it just when, you, when I was 20, I you didn't know anything, or you thought you did. I thought I did. Yes. I, yeah, I had, yeah. No, I had no clue. Right. Um, Michael, right what, about, what about you? Yeah, I think that's a similar theme for me, too, that, uh, you know, it's, it's okay to commit. <laughs> you know, I think at age 20, you just want to keep every opportunity available, every door and window open. Because that might be something. The grass that, might be greener that, over here. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that gives me some satisfaction. So maybe it's a, a little bit of just you know, let go of the past, kind of enjoy the present, but um, it's okay to commit and have a plan, <laughs> you know, yeah, make yeah. a plan. And I think, you know, maybe that was part of a, a parent, maybe becoming a parent helped us do that better and try to instill that in our children, Emily, that, um, you know, it's, you can advance so much more quickly if you actually are intentional about <laughs> what you're in, college for and what mm-hmm. you'd like to accomplish right. in your young 20s right. yeah. have a plan for that uh, luckily I some circumstances word, came to me but uh, yeah, I didn't know what that word meant when I was 20 plan, <laughs> yeah. a plan, a plan? Yeah. I had some interesting experience recently I went I saw the um, Rolling Stones last week oh. uh, in Charlotte and 31 years ago I saw them. I did too. I was Carter there. Finley Stadium. Oh no yeah. not Carter Finley. Yeah, I, saw them I was I, in Charlotte. I was a student it was when I was a student yeah. at NC State and the difference of the experience that I had, frankly, I enjoyed it so much more at 51 than I did at 20. And I think it was because the joy that they were expressing oh, just yeah. being able to play. Even Keith Richards made this comment, you know, which is great. You know, he's like, we're happy to be here. He said, hell, I'm just happy to be anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's 77 years yeah. old and, and – Still Is he moving around that? well? It was there? unbelievable. Really? I was I was stunned at how great it was. Was Mick Jagger uh, dancing? Yes. <laughs> to have been. I mean, <laughs> they wore, help <laughs> They wore me out just you know just being there. So, but that, I think that was I, I I I take that back to the perspective that I had at twenty versus fifty one. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. I, at the time I was so absorbed with myself. I don't remember half the songs they played back in yeah. nineteen ninety. You know, and yeah. this experience was just so much was just so much better. So yeah. um, I probably threw you off there because I just really got out of whack with my questions. I fit one of my favorite questions, which is you got a recent book or something you would recommend to anybody? Or, and Emily's looking at me. This is her time to roll her eyes, her eyes at me. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> you got nothing? I got nothing <laughs> because I'm going to tell you why. Um, so every one of my children's friends and my children – Send me their English papers or their engineering papers or Holy their moly. psychology papers to proof. And that is my life. I am a paper reading fool. Mm. So um yeah, no. I, I haven't I don't I don't read. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean yeah. sorry, I don't have to All right, Michael, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna edit that part out for sure <laughs> michael you got anything anything you would recommend um 
Yeah, well, the latest book I've read, I'm a, a big fan of Michael Lewis. Um, who wrote Moneyball and yeah, God, yeah, he yeah. take any mm. subject I knew I and knew just that make name. it yeah. so fun and really dives into it. And his latest one uh, is called The Premonition. And uh, you know, he talks to a lot of the public health officials who have spent decades staying up at night worrying about pandemics and what would happen in the world <laughs> if we ever uh, had to defend against one. And uh, it, it's pretty fascinating uh, just in, in that for kind of current events and right. just getting the perspective of so many professionals around the country who are really tracking and plotting and <laughs> Uh, trying to defend against uh, exactly what happened. <laughs> right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm a big reader, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll take a. Now I am a documentary down. watcher. That question has passed. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. No, no. Here's your chance. No, <laughs> no, really. Uh, okay. It's not even worth. Just trying to make up for no, that. No, it's all good. It's all good. No, I. I, feel oh, I thought you were going to say it was because of my Ashbrook <laughs> education or something. <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong with Ashbrook education. I'm kidding. Good gracious, you know. <laughs> I was there with you, so. I, yeah, that, hey, listen, I, I, I remember one distinct thing to your point going to college. We had a great high school experience compared really to a did. lot of the people that I met at NC State. I yeah. mean, we really did. I mean, I. It was really unique, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you had the timing in the class. And, uh-huh. and, and so, but, you know, again, at the time, too, Ashbrook. And Ashbrook is still great, you know. Um, so. Um, thank you for going through those, you know, really uh, in-depth questions that everybody in Gaston County was curious uh, about. So this is another question I like to, to answer because we're going to kind of get back to, to uh, tourism development. So by, besides Gaston County, um, tourism development, excuse me, why is, why is Gaston such a great place? Emily, start with you. Uh, I mean, I think we've said it. Just, yeah. you know, it's it's so unique in the fact that we have the blue waves and the green waves and just the attractions along the way in between yeah. them. It's just something that uh, you can't get anywhere else within, what, how many, I mean, several states. You right, know, it, right. it's just it's just a unique place. And um, when people come, they, they say that. And th- they didn't realize, wow, you know, I didn't know little old Gastonia. Or Gaston County had had all that there is. To I like offer. the phrase. Actually, I have to admit, I've never heard the phrase "blue ways," but oh yeah, duh, it makes perfect sense, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm glad to hear that. The water trail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michael, what about For you? Trail. Would you share? Would you anything to share with us about why is Gaston County such a great place? You know what? Yeah, I I think God blessed us here with a, a lot of great assets, uh, with from Crowder's Mountain to the Catawba River. You know, perfect bookends. And just as people drive by on I-85, I, you know they're looking up at the mountain and crossing the river and saying, where is this? I need to come check this mm-hmm, out sometime. Yeah. And to just be able to represent a place uh, that you can be so proud of saying, this is uh, who I represent. This is who I promote. This is uh, what I want to help grow. And this is the community that I'm part of. Um, that, that's, that's huge. But I think even a little bit more than that, is a commitment to the the people who uh, are in and of this community. So God put those great resources here, but you know, you think back through history and um, some of the things that just local citizens have done for this this county. Right. You know, like you had mentioned, Shield Museum and Bud and Lily Shield, yeah. and without donating, you know, all their artifacts and minerals and those types of things, we 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 don't have. The Shield Museum and all of those contexts. And if, you know what? It, and I learned from Ann Tippett a couple of episodes ago. You know, if it wasn't for the Boy Scouts having a a a, a um, automatic retirement age, where well, you know he got out of the Boy Scouts because he probably would have done it anyway, but maybe not as soon, or who knows what it would have looked like. But you know, so there's some serendipity mm-hmm. in a lot of those things yeah. as well. So you see, just that commitment to community and the passion for the place and. Lo and behold, it just kind of sustains us going forward, you know, and there's umpteen uh, other uh, individuals and families that are committed to it. And even, you know, the history of this business, Stephen, that uh, yeah. you're a part of, uh, I think that's reflective of the community. 
And it obviously must be because you're doing things like this Gaston's Great Podcast. Well, just, thank just you. To show it off because you are so committed to and part of the fabric of this community. Yeah, we, we, we know. We, yeah, we do. We love Gaston County. And it's, it's, the community has been really, really good to us. So um, it was instilled in us early on that we need to, to give back the community and, and do what we can. But I, w- I would agree with you, something you said earlier about the last five or six years. I don't know if it coincides with the Go campaign maybe uh, also, which was, I think, a big part of that. But there is a, a – I, I, I feel a difference in the attitude, you know. I, I, you know, because I've always been proud to say I'm from Gaston County, but I'm not sure everybody has always said that. I agree. You know, being able to say that, but it seems – Well, we get bad raps. I mean, not a bad rap, but we get made fun of yeah. sometimes. Yeah. You know, we're you know. the redheaded stepchild of yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. Except yeah. now we – Except now, of course, you know, Charlotte is the gateway. <laughs> That's right. To yeah. Gastonia. We have to make sure we get that plug in. Uh, um, so, But I think in a lot of places, local residents tend to overlook certain things. I think so, too. Yeah. You know, but visitors of people from out of town are just completely unaware. Oblivious. And they just see great times with family and friends. And have you ever had a bad experience? <laughs> You know, spending time with the, the people you love and you're close to. Well, you, you brought up a really good point because – even Crowder's Mountain and Kings Mountain, you may, you know, I've driven through 85 right so many times. If somebody's doing that for the first time, I can imagine, like, what is that? What is and that? where did that come from? Right because, on. you know, for miles in either direction, there's nothing else like that. That's mm-hmm. an interesting point because I'm so used to it when I'm driving south, 85 from here, you know. Uh, that's well, and visitors something. don't know the history. They don't know the, right, the yeah. you know, the commentary uh, that's been said on the radios <laughs> and uh, on the radio stations right. and all that kind of stuff about about Gaston County. So they're not, they're just looking at what they see, right. yeah. which is a lot of nice things. And at right. the same time, we need local people to just not be dismissive of any of it. Oh, because yeah. Because they can be so influential. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got a an audience of followers. Everyone has friends and relatives and just, you know, Talk us up. Yeah, <laughs> Help absolutely. us do our job by being the ambassador and the positive voice. Well, guys, this has been really, really good. So where can our listeners go um, if they want to learn more about the organization? Is there a website or a phone number? How, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, you, you had mentioned the, the Go campaign and the Gaston Outside campaign. And one of the great things is the kind of the carryover with all of that is that's what we tell people to do, you know, go to Gaston. So – we can um, share more information with you if you just go to gogastonnc.org okay. or follow us on social media at gogastonnc. So those two places, uh, you can find out more, uh, check out event schedules and what's happening. And, and check the we- website out. It is uh, full of great photography, a lot of uh, um, really good content that, a lot of you uh, locals might not even know about. Probably. <laughs> My wife, who grew up in Charlotte, near the South End, when I first got this job and started sharing with her images and content that we mm-hmm. were putting in the visitor's guide, she couldn't believe She was like, oh, this is a place that was across the river, mm-hmm. just 15 minutes from where I grew up. She said, you, you bring me these pictures, and I think it's somewhere out west, somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and, you know, your loss. Yeah. That's your loss. Come yeah. see it now with me. Yeah, that's an interesting that's an interesting point. So so any final words of wisdom or anything you guys would like to share before we finish up? The, the best episode so far? This yeah. yeah. Thanks for having <laughs> us though. Really. You're very welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to do it and um really just happy to be the a voice kind of promoting and carrying forward and amplifying all the great things about this place. You know, we just get to shed light on it and share it with others. Well, both of your passion um, for what you're doing is clear, and, it, and it's coming through and with what you're talking about. So, you know what, and it takes that to um, get things done, right? It, it takes it – takes, uh, it, it can be just a small group of individuals or an individual with a lot of passion to get things done. So uh, I appreciate greatly um, the progress the county has made. I know you guys have, a, have been a big part of that, so – so thank you very thanks, much. And thanks for what you do, too. It's uh, Little Steven's become a leader. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Emily can attest, that's a long way, isn't it? That was a, quite an uphill <laughs> That was quite an uphill path. From... You did good, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, you know, something that I do at the end of every episode is kind of, kind of do my own book recommendation. And um, this week is... This is, my, I think, the second time I've repeated an author. 
Uh, this week is a, a, a book called The Coffee Bean from John Gordon. It's just a, it kind of ties into uh, kind of what we're talking about today, the, all the positive things happening around um, Gaston County. And, and John Gordon's kind of, he's kind of what I call the positive guy and um, with processes and just in, in, in general. He's got a lot of good books, but uh, I, I would encourage you to check that one out. Called again, John Gordon, The Coffee Bean. And my quote for this week, I think this is the first time I've repeated a, a, a quote as well, from uh, at least from the, the individual who said this quote. This comes from Zig Ziglar. It's oh, on attitude. Him. And he said, your attitude, not your aptitude, determines your altitude. So, yeah, I'm a big Zig Ziglar fan. I he's, like Zig yeah, Ziglar. Yeah, he's got, yeah. Um, you could go you could Google Zig Ziglar and you could probably find about 500 quotes in about yeah. five minutes. So, mm-hmm. um, I appreciate that. So, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please spread the word if you can about the podcast, and please don't hesitate to contact us here at podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the top, the top, what? You can find the podcast, maybe, <laughs> and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, and please follow us on our social media platforms. You can also subscribe and rate the podcast on most podcast services. Of course, that's only if you're going to give us a, five, a five-star rating. If you're not, you know, we don't want you to rate us, actually. <laughs> But thank you for listening. So you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and, and other uh, podcast services. Thanks again to Michael Applegate and Emily Carpenter from Gaston County Tourism Development for being our guest today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Amy Anderson and Elizabeth King from GSM Services and currently being edited by the Sumner Group. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great. 